Hello and welcome. In this video, I will show you how to create a Windows shared folder in FreeNAS and how to connect to that shared folder from any Windows client in your network. Well, at least in your subnet. First of all, we need to verify the necessary prerequisites are in place. The first prerequisite is to have installed the FreeNAS operating system onto a computing device. Well, we've installed FreeNAS, the FreeNAS operating system, onto a virtual machine. This was demonstrated in an earlier, in my earlier video tutorial, the FreeNAS 11 beginner number four video. The second prerequisite is to have boot up the FreeNAS operating system at least once and have, and have configured the web administrative console. Again, I've demonstrated exactly how to do this in my FreeNAS 11 Beginner 5 video tutorial. Lastly, you need to verify that you've created a volume inside the FreeNAS operating system. Again, this was demonstrated in the FreeNAS 11 Beginner 5 video series, video tutorial. So I'm going to click settings here and click on storage. And as you can see, I have created a virtual hard disk. My hard disk has a virtual size of 16 gigabytes. It's a dynamically allocated disk. So the actual size in this case is two megabytes because there's nothing on it at the moment. Okay. And just to show you that the virtual machine is indeed up and running and the URL of the web administrative console is here. Now again, your IP address will most likely be different. So I'm now going to go ahead and log in to the web administrative console. So 192.168.0.5 in my case. Great. And I'm going to enter in the password that I assigned when I initially installed the FreeNAS operating system. Oh, invalid password. I beg your pardon. Let me try that again. And here we are. <laughs> we all make mistakes. Okay, so now I've successfully logged in to the FreeNAS Web Administrative Console. The next step is to create the folder we wish to share. The easiest way to do that is simply to scroll down on the left hand side and select Shell. So I'll click on that and run it. This opens up a command line terminal that is running on the same computing node on which you've installed the FreeNAS operating system. This is really nice. It basically saves us having to SSH from our client PC to the FreeNAS, to the server or the node running the FreeNAS server. It's very, very nice. It effectively runs the command line terminal within the browser, your client browser. So let's have a look at the contents. So by default, we're logged in as root. So the first thing is to go to, I suppose, the default folder where all volumes are mounted in Linux is under slash MNT. That's a Linux convention. So let's have a look at the contents of that folder. And as you can see, there is a free NAS volume that was created earlier. So um, let's change into that. So let's have a look at the contents of this directory. And it's empty. Great. So we now wish to create a new folder that we're going to make available later as a Windows shared folder. So why not? Let's call the folder shared folder. <laughs> That's an appropriate name. Let me spell that correctly. Shared folder. Excellent. And let us just view the contents of that directory once more. And there we go. No harm taking a note of the permissions. This folder is owned by root and belongs to the group wheel. Just be aware of that. Let's keep that in the back of your mind. Um, okay, so I'm now going to exit out of the shell by simply typing exit. So we have just created the folder we wish to share. The next step is to make the sh folder shareable. And to do that, select sharing. And then we have several options here. We can make an, an Apple sh uh, share a Unix folder share, a Windows folder share. So this is the option that we want, Windows SMB. 
and then we select Add Windows SMB Share. Just to briefly recap, SMB stands for Server Message Block, and it is basically Windows Network File Sharing Protocol that it uses to access and share shared folders. Okay, so first of all, let us select Browse, and let us navigate to the shared folder that we actually created and want to share. So I'm going to select that and make sure that it appears in the path uh, box. So I'm going to scroll down and um, we now need to choose an appropriate uh, name for our shared folder. For simplicity, I'm just going to call it my share. Okay. Yes, we wish to apply the default permissions uh, recursively. And yes, we wish to allow guest access. So if this is true, then no password is required to connect to the share. Privileges will be those of the guest account. Now, obviously, if you wish to limit access to your shared folder, you would need to create appropriate users uh, and passwords and configure those such that only those users can access it. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to allow guest access. So click OK. Now, very good, it says Windows SMB Share successfully updated. And the wizard is very nice. It realizes that if we wish to create a shared folder and make it available, therefore we must enable the SMB service. So I'm going to select yes. So it's now switched effectively to the services tab here. And as you can see, the SMB service is now running. At this point, there is no harm to review the settings for the SMB service. And to do that, we go to the left hand side expand services and scroll down and select SMB here. So I'm going to select that and these are the various settings. So let's have a look. Most of the settings you really don't need to change. Okay. Um, yes, we should use the guest account nobody. So use this option to override the username nobody by default, which will be used to access the services which are specified as guest. We're not going to override the nobody account is fine. Whatever privileges this user has will be available to any client connecting to the guest service. That's fine. So if you wish to create your own users, you can make them available here, your own guest users, should I say. You can also create your own specific users um, as well. Okay, so that's fine. We're very happy with that. Use this option to override the file creation mask. No, 0666 is false. Or it's not as false, I beg your pardon, is fine. 0666 effectively gives us full read and write access. And the option here is 0777, and that gives us effectively read, write, and execute access, which is necessary in order to be able to create directories. Okay. And allow empty password. Why not? Let us choose that option. So let's review the various options that remain. Um, all of it is good. All good. So I'm going to simply select OK to activate those changes. So the SMB service was successfully updated. However, the service was already run, so it would be wise now to stop the service and then to start it after a few moments to ensure the new settings take effect. So I'm now going to click Start and the service is now running again. OK. There is one more important step we need to perform in order to ensure that we have both read and write access to the shared folder. And that is to make sure that the volume upon which the shared folder resides enables read and write access. So to do that, let us select storage and the default option selected is volumes. And this is a list, these are a listing of the volumes we have. So we only have one volume and by default within that volume is one data set. This is just terminology that FreeNAS uses. So the volume could, for example, be a drive or a collection of drives. And if you like, a data set could be one or more partitions, if you like, within that drive, logical partitions. Okay, that's a very high level explanation. So let us select the data set and then select change permissions. Okay, so remember I said at the start of the video, just keep, uh, try and remember that the owner of our folder was root and the group was real. So 
it inherited the, the owner and group indeed from the data set. Okay, from the free NAS vol1 data set. Okay, perfect. So by default, as you can see, only the owner root has read, write, and execute access. So we wish the guest user to have read, write, and execute access. So I'm simply going to check um, all of the permissions. So crucially, other as well. So that way the guest user will have read, write, and execute access to our shared drive. We will leave the permission types as Unix. You might wonder, why don't we set them to Windows? Well, recall that FreeNAS is actually a Linux-based operating system. In fact, it's based on FreeBSD. So, and these are the permissions that apply to the folder that has been managed by the FreeBSD i FreeNAS server. Okay. And yes, set permissions recursively. So as we create new directories, we want to ensure that these permissions apply. So click change. Mount point permissions successfully updated. Okay. It is good practice to create a separate data set for a shared folder. That way you can control the permissions explicitly. You can also set quotas. Um, if we have a look at the various options here, we can actually, if I select advanced mode, we can actually set quotas for this data set. That way you can guarantee, if you give read and write access to guest users, that they will only use a maximum number of gigabytes or megabytes as the case may be. Um, you can also reserve space for this data set as well. So that's, that's one of the reasons why it's good practice. And secondly, you can basically you can contain guest users that they don't escape, should we say, outside a particular data set. Okay, the last step is to, is to actually connect to our shared folder from a Windows client PC using Windows Explorer. So let's do that now. So I'm going to run Windows Explorer on my host PC. Um, I'm going to select this PC and then from the menu bar select computer and then select add a network location. So we're presented with the add network wizard. So simply select next. We're given one option, choose a custom network location. So obviously we must select the option, it's the only one. Now we're asked to specify the location of your website or your shared folder. So I suggest you click on view examples just to get an idea how we should enter in this information. So we're told a shared folder should be entered in this format here. Great. So I'm going to enter that in now. Slash slash 192.168.0.5. That is the IP address of my free NAS server. Backslash and my share, which is the name of my shared folder. And click next. Brilliant. So it now asks us, what do you want to name this location? I'm going to accept the default name that's given to me. That's provided. Select next and you have successfully created this network share. Excellent. A shortcut for this location will appear on my computer and open it up when I click finish. Great. So I click finish. So now it's opened up um, my shared folder. So I have successfully connected to the shared folder on my free NAS server. Last but not least, I want to demonstrate that I do indeed have read and write access to the shared folder. So simply right click, select new folder, and I'm going to type a name of the folder called test folder and press enter. And there you go, there are the folders created. Okay, I have two versions of this. So let me close two ver Windows Explorer windows open. So I'll close one of them. So to prove that I have indeed, in fact, created that test folder in the shared folder, let me go back to my free NAS web administrative console. Let me scroll down on the left hand side and select shell. And this, as you recall, runs a command line terminal um, inside our browser that connects directly to our free NAS server. So I'm going to navigate to my shared folder. So I change into the volume in which the shared folder is located. Let us view the contents of that folder. And there's my shared folder. So let us change into the shared folder and let us view the contents of it. And there you go, test folder. And as you can see, there's test folder. Now I'm going to switch back briefly 
And to prove it from the other way, I'm going to create a new folder called my folder. <laughs> How imaginative. And it's just created. Now, let, and just to view it, there it is, just created a few seconds ago. And now let me go back to my, uh, my share. I'm now going to refresh, and there is my folder. So, there you go. That is how you create a shared folder in FreeNAS and make it available to any Windows client on your network with read and write access. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or feedback, uh, please leave them below the video. Thank you.